So about the about the episode. Oh, there we are. Um, when you uh, the, one of the things that uh, stri strikes me most about seeing it with an audience is how how the comedy plays, how the comedy plays. I mean, it's really really it's really like you you you've made a black comedy in addition to all the other things that you've made. <laughs> and I wonder how much of that comes out of uh, knowing the actors and knowing what they can do. Like, to what degree do you write to their talents and also for the actors? Have you ever just called up one of the producers and said, hey, what if we do this? Uh, <laughs> um, well, uh, John and I have always kind of sh share the same sense of humor. So we always like it dark and weird. And we're just like really relieved that they do too. Uh, <laughs> so, so the fact that they're really good at it lets us uh, kind of run wild with that. Yeah, and, uh, and also really talented, uh, uh, very quick, uh, can, you know, you guys are generally like some of our best one line, like some of the, some of the best lines, like like Jordan writes them. Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> Tat, like some In some of moment. the best material comes when you just let them let them do their own thing. You too, Christian. They I said that. It's very nice. They they let us improv quite a bit, which is very very rare for a television show to do that uh, because time is money and you don't want to waste any time and you want to get the script, but. Uh, Pretty quickly on in the game, Tat and I would have fun with Allison and Donnie coming up with just fun little outros and buttons to scenes and things like that. It's an industry term, buttons. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, so pro professional. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very rare to get that privilege in, in television. Um, and uh, it's really, you're starting to see it more though. You're starting to see shows that are semi-scripted and, and improvised with the actors. Um, and all the variances, and I think producers are starting to realize, and directors and writers and showrunners are starting to realize that you can come up with some great stuff on the fly with, with some of these people who really delve into the characters and really know their characters, and you know, you also have to be brave enough to throw some stinkers out there that don't land, and you know, you know that you're safe, it's not live, you're not on stage, it's, it can be edited, and you right now, edit the shit safe, out of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> safe, I am not safe, I'm so nervous, flop sweats. <laughs> Flop sweats. <laughs> do you ever do you ever continue past past rehearsing and actually acting the scenes that are written or that you're doing on set? Do you ever find yourself sort of messing around with the characters just for fun? You mean on set? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, all the time. Pretty yeah. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when uh, when you when you come up with something like that, like uh, well, okay, so let me uh, here's something that's always been uh, uh, just obsessing me. And I have you all here, so I can ask you. <laughs> but uh, but uh, for, for Tatiana mainly, when you're playing a scene with multiple iterations of yourself, multiple characters, mm -hmm. I'm looking at this thing, and I don't think I ever really appreciated the level of planning and craft that's involved in that. But it looks like you've got uh, doubles that, are you, that you're talking to for like shots and reverse shots. And you've got some kind, you know, some kind of compositing, and there's other scenes where you're cutting from one of you to the other. How does that work? What is that like? And also, how do you keep yourself oriented? It seems like it's like higher math or something. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got an incredible um, clone double whose name is Catherine Alexander. Yes! Whoa. You know who she is. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. She's completely vital to the process. I mean, Catherine not only in the scenes is memorizing everything I'm doing on my side, so she's not only watching me taking in, okay, she stepped there on that line, she turned away from me on that line, like all of these technical things. She's also going, oh, she's, she's giving me this emotion or this uh, read on that line, and, and uh, like she's clocking the emotional things that I'm doing. At the same time, she's performing as one of the clones with me. Right. So she's giving me also a performance on her side. She's unbelievable like totally unbelievable and completely vital mm -hmm. and speaking of like improvising these clone scenes are often the most technical the most kind of heady days the day is sort of dictated by the shots and the technical sort of whether the techno dollies are our buddy or the worst <laughs> but usually the best but um but it's a very technical thing and yet Catherine and I because we've we've grown this relationship where we completely share these parts She'll improvise stuff, throw stuff at me during very technical clone scenes, and I'll go like, that was awesome. I'm stealing that for my side. Right. So Helena's, you know, Helena's line, 
Don't Let the Bed Bugs Bite yeah. in season three, two, thank you. <laughs> right. The like camping farting scene. Yeah. Um, she's, she improvised that and we're like, that's genius. You know the character is beautiful, we're gonna use it. And that was totally her improvised line. Do you work your way through a scene sequentially? When, because if you're working like that, I would imagine if you get deep into a scene and you come up with an idea that changes something earlier in the scene, you'd have to get to redo it. And you're shooting so fast, that's probably not feasible. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. We kind of rehearse, we, we've got a pretty good sense of the structure of the scene. And then within that structure, you, you can play around it with nuances, but it is, you know, it's written beautifully, and it's written with a, a direct sense of where it's going. So, we, so we adhere to the script, you know, while, while kind of playing around within it. Yeah, there's usually, you know, when we when we're doing clone scenes, generally speaking, you know, if we're doing um, a, a shot that has two two of them in the same shot, or two or three of them in the sh in, in, uh, them, uh, you know, <laughs> tat, there's only one. In the same frame, actually. we'll shoot it kind of like a uh, like a master. In yeah. a way, so there'd be like you know uh, a, a group shot that um, that shows all three of them, um, and then that's that's very very technical. Uh, but then we have to you know shoot coverage for that too. So that gets broken down into kind of close-ups. That's generally tat over Catherine or some v version of that. Within that, there's a little bit more freedom to mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, Improvise and, and and be a little bit looser with the uh, with the uh, with the dialogue and and we explore a little bit more within that as long as it kind of continues to uh, you know match into the to the wide shot. So so and from an informational standpoint, I guess that means that like you have in a certain scene, you've got to deliver this, that, and the other pieces of information. And as long as you're delivering those, you have some latitude. Yeah, yeah. I we mean, we like to play generally. Yeah, when but we're, we stick when we're to the script. It's scripted. It's yeah. super scripted. Right. Yeah, super but scripted. this crazy person improved with herself in the in the <laughs> dining scene, in the dinner scene. The dinner scene. She like did an improv line as Helena about the babka cake. Yeah. yeah. Like the previous day, and then like many characters later as we got around at the table, as Allison, you, it, you remembered your bloody improv and then improv with yourself <laughs> <laughs> through the earpiece, and I followed along, because... Yeah, you, you improv too. Yeah, yeah, but it's insane that you can do that. Yeah, improv That's with nuts. yourself. That's nuts. <laughs> but it's cool that, I don't, I don't think, any improv would have been found in a clone scene in the first season, but no. as we got, <laughs> no, because it was no, so scary, no. but we got to a point fear. where that was <laughs> possible. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even have a blooper reel. No, <laughs> first season was a scream of uh, terror. Uh, terror. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, on, on that note, the scream of terror, uh, <laughs> one of the things I love to ask uh, folks who make these television shows that we love so much is, was there a point during production of, say, the first season or the first episode or whatever, where you said to yourself, okay, I think this could actually work. <laughs> I think we may have this. We, there, we got it. There was for John and I. Oh, for sure, absolutely. We, yeah, it was uh, uh, episode 103 at the end when uh, Sarah steps in and for the first time we see Cosima, Allison, and Sarah together. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when John looked at me and was like, I think it's gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there was a beautiful scene in that episode where Sarah meets Kasima for the first time in the bar. And I remember, because oh. I wasn't the director of that episode, it was uh, David Frizee. And, and he had shot this beautiful scene between Sarah and Kasima. And, um, and, uh, and there was a shot, uh, the two shot in the mirror. Mm. And, uh, and I remember watching it going, oh my God, like I'm completely lost in this. I've completely. I, I, it's it's two completely separate characters, and I and and really like because we weren't sure. Mm. I think there was a little part of us that wasn't sure going in whether people were going to buy this or not. And then we were like, "Hey, I bet people are going to have favorite clones." <laughs> <laughs> what about y'all? Was there? Yo. Was there? Was there a moment Yo, like that, that for you? you all. I'm sorry. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from Texas. I'm from Texas. I think. I think for for me, the first Comic Con when Comic -Con, we were like, yeah. oh, people have seen this show, mm -hmm. <laughs> and people are dressed in cosplay and Nerd and HQ. Yeah, Nerd HQ yeah. is a big. Was anybody there? When you sang Taylor Swift. Nobody was there. Yeah. I think yes. when Jordan sang Taylor Swift. That really. I think that was the apex. <laughs> 
Wow. Ready? I'd forgotten about that slash repressed it. <laughs> so thank you all for that. <laughs> but it was Nerd HQ. Yeah, it was it was just the cuz like the whole the whole first season we were shooting in the middle of winter in Canada. So I I think that there's just something about that that's I don't know, you just create it in a vacuum and you're, you're kind of like, this is a really cool art project that my mom and her bridge club is going to see. <laughs> and didn't think for a second, she doesn't have a bridge club. <laughs> didn't think for a second that anybody was actually going to watch the show. And then all of a sudden we walk into this theater and, or this, um, this stage in Petco Park. I had no idea what Nerd HQ was. None of us, oh, I had been to Comic-Con before, but on a very small scale. And we just kind of got hit with this wave of fa fan energy or something, and it, we all kind of choked up on the stage because, I don't know, it's just am amazing to think that a work of fiction has moved people. That's pretty amazing. I, I, I oh, yes. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> because I came in in the second season. Right. <laughs> and I had already watched the first season and was already a huge fan. Right. And so, me coming in, I knew how lucky I was to be a part of it, and I knew I had to step up my game to match it. <laughs> when, when, you, when you told your friends and family, oh, I'm going to be on Orphan Black, what did they, it was what was the reaction? Day. It was a proud day. <laughs> <laughs> when Ari came to set, the first day he was on set, we were all like, whoa, this guy's amazing. Because he came in and we were shooting this kind of like Coen Brothers style, like, Western almost, yeah. and it was in beginning the of second season the in the diner. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the and teaser. The he just had this incredible, fully formed character that was so new to our show and, and totally took it. <laughs> Thank you for that. No, but it was, but, it was but. like, it, <laughs> same thing with us. Like, we were like, oh, we got to match this now. Like, this is the new level of, of what we can do and how the world can expand. And that's a testament to you guys, too. Like, the genre of the, the show kept. Yeah, I mean it's ne it's it's kind of hard to determine what it even is because oh, yeah. it sort of lives in a lot. That's of why it's places. it's it's kind of cool like watching this episode because I watched this and this is like I'm going is this is this Orphan Black? <laughs> 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 but I kind of like that about the show like that was always our intention was that this would be a, a show that would kind of transcend genre in a way it it, it could kind of do a little bit of everything you know so. I don't know what we were doing here, but it's we certainly haven't done this on the show before. <laughs> <laughs> Running that, around in the trees, you know. That's that's yeah. some that, yeah, that's some like Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> been like, yeah, you're you're tough. Who? You, Sarah. Oh, Sarah, she's yeah. tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good boy. Well, you too. But, yeah, I'm yeah. not tough. I was trying. I was trying to come up with a list of ways in which you you, you have been injured. The different iterations. Oh, of oh wow! On set or like? Well, either <laughs> one. Character. But I was thinking. In, I was thinking in character because there were. It's like okay, there's three or four new ones to add now. Yeah, the 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 girls go through it in the first like five episodes. It's just like. Sarah's got it the worst. I know. She has like well, a Rachel stabbing. didn't have a great time either now. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and like sometimes like both uh, both an injury to you and the character makes it in. Like in the first season when you're smashing the, the briefcase and you like yeah. bloodied your knuckle. Real like that, that stayed in. But then John was like, your blood looks fake. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> totally real. Get the makeup yeah, in. Like, it's too cartoony. I was like, it's oh from my, God. my veins. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly learned my lesson, like letting you do physical things, because she'll just do it at 110%. It's like, hey, we, this is, can be fake. <laughs> we can kind of fake it here. We're not, you know, it doesn't have <laughs> blood, blood. Oh my God. You're, 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 you're talking about the, uh, the way it switches between genres. That's an aspect of the show that I don't think is appreciated enough. In, oh. it, it's almost like the, like the show the show gets to play multiple roles too, and you've got you know yeah. you've got this you've got science you've got science fiction you've got all these different flavors of horror you've got body horror you've got kind of like hard science fiction you, you I mean everything story. love story screwball comedy a lot of screwball yeah yeah well, there's the love story and paranoid thriller is a big part of it we were talking about that a little yeah earlier yeah. family drama family drama family mm -hmm. drama <laughs> that's true. I think it transcends genre, but it also transcends the, um, the blocks in which um, female identity are, are, are locked in. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think the transcending of the genres sort of um, 
explodes that notion in a metaphorical way. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> it does. It does. And and uh, and that's. Uh, can we talk? And, <laughs> and can we? <laughs> can we can we talk about that for a second? Because like just in this uh, in this episode alone, there are several different. I guess you would say big big issues that are that are addressed, but they're addressed in that orphan black way, which is very sort of light on its feet. Um, did you envision from the beginning this show b being that sort of show where you can sort of smuggle real world issues into this uh, this narrative, this kind of uh, you know adventure cliffhanger driven twists and turns sort of story? Um, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. The plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, you know, like putting big ideas uh, like a virus in pop culture. Yeah. Big time, and you know we we. Uh, we particularly like lean on our on our science advisor, Kasima Herter, the real Kasima. Yeah. Um, oh my God, I love it. She, she really keeps us keeps keeps it smart and top. Um, seeing themselves represented on the show or or in a capacity that wherein the, the character's main preoccupation is not with their sexuality or with their coming out, that there is um, much more complex or. Um, Textually layered component of themselves or their prescription they're exploring, or or just that the stakes are higher than the fact that they're going to be coming out or sorting through singles on on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> though, uh, we did do that. though we did do that, yes. yeah. we did have a scene about that because why not? Because <laughs> that's important too. But um, yeah, that they've said that it gave them the confidence to come out to their parents or just to see themselves differently. Right. Like that, I, of course, coming out to, to is, is, is important, but what always strikes me as most astounding is when someone says, like, this character, like Kasima, she, she made me feel differently about me. Mm. That's nuts to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is incredible, that a work of fiction, a, f a fictional character, something that just sort of existed on paper or in us and, and in front of these cameras can actually change someone's framework about themselves. Mm. That's art. Yeah. I think also it's a sh yeah. <laughs> What brings me a lot of joy is that it's a show that celebrates outsiders. And because it's so popular, it makes you feel that ev everybody in a way feels like an outsider. And this show draws everybody in into the inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are the cutest person. You should drink wine more often. <laughs> I, I think it's really important just for some people just kind of come out of the box kind of fully formed. They're just hit their teens and they just know this is, you know, this is who I am and what I am and what I like. But most of us don't know that and we need clues and we need role models and we need signs and experiences and sometimes it's yeah it's hard to be what you can't see and so having a representation of something it, it's it's fantastic to to yeah to be able to see complexity and choices and it's like the fir when when you when you first get songs you suddenly somebody articulates exactly how you're feeling and you're like no that's it that's mm -hmm. what i mean that's how i feel mm -hmm. so that's what people have said to me about the show they go no that's it that's i'm i'm all of that i'm not just this mm -hmm. small thing mm -hmm. can i just say as well it's so um amazing how you all how much you care about it that you all know who catherine alexandra is that you know who kasima herter is the real kasima mm -hmm. it's really brilliant yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> thank you yeah. You also know who Kevin Hanchard is, and yeah. uh, totally, he has to work in the morning and got called away by like evil producers <laughs> <laughs> of another show. He was supposed to be yes. sitting here with us, and he had to leave like an hour ago. He's like, bye. Yeah. Yeah. We miss him already. We do. So, uh, speaking of the fans, uh, would it be all right if we took a few questions? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay, let's do this. Sure. Oh, okay. The nice, house lights nice, are coming nice. on. Nice. Excellent. Holy cow. Uh, the, yes. Okay. Hi. 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 Thank you, guys. I know you've had a really long day because you've been doing press all day. Go you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're very, very brave. Yeah. Yeah. So my name is Marissa. Um, I'm an acting major here in New York at Pace University. 
Nice. 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 That's awesome. Um, I've looked up to actors my entire life, um, you know, starting really young. There is no one I will ever look up to more than you, Tatiana. Aww. You have made me a better actor. And, um, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You are the best actor of our generation. You have made other actors of my generation and your generation better. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you do and who you are. So oh, you. yeah. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, how do I be you? No. <laughs> I mean, also, like, yeah. you talked so much in, about not being in your head, and so mm. maybe is it that? Like, if you just, with your improv and everything you did. You all are the best. Yeah. You really are the best. You all are the best. Somebody yeah. pass some tissues up to the stage. Just, <laughs> yeah. I think um, the, the getting out of my head thing, and, and the... I'm very fortunate, now I'm gonna cry too. I'm very fortunate that Catherine is, is my sister. Like she embodies all the things that Kasima and Sarah share, which is like, I need you. I could never do this without you. Mm. I, I love you. I don't even know you that well. And I love you so much, you know what I mean? Like we've known each other for five years now and we know each other quite intimately now, but in the beginning it was you like, didn't? who are you? And that was what Sarah was going through, and that's what Cosimo was going through. I think using how you feel about your scene partner is, is vital, and so um, it's a joyful thing to get to do. Whether, whatever that is, it doesn't have to be positive. It doesn't, you know, things can, can look like something even though they're the opposite. You know, they always say, like, love and hate can, you know, look like, or hate can look like sexual attraction or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I think using who that person, like using everything that is that person, everything that is your relationship is, is really helpful for me in those clone scenes. And I, I've only ever known the clones as, as Catherine. Mm. Like, mm. she is the clones, you know what I mean? So um, we really do share those parts. So she is Kasima in those moments, and every like I wish you could see it, but everything she does is I'm, if the back you know behind the scenes stuff shows you, yeah. everything she does is that. Um, and the getting out of your head, I think, is making it about your scene partner, mm -hmm. and that's something I learned from Catherine too, because it's all about giving it over to me, um, and and facilitating me. So it's about listening. It you, you know you you know what you're doing. You know how to do it. Just just. I signed up for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And improv is all about like, skills. yes, and is all about like, my scene partner needs me, and I need my scene partner, and without them, like, we're, we're toast, and this is going to die. So we vitally need each other, you know, and it's, it's like a, it's a great thing, because you never, you're never alone up there. It's all about your scene partner, you know, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I really want to tell you guys, um, when right before the show came out, I was graduating high school and so enthralled in the
sudden I had these women that I looked to that made me feel seen, made me feel less alone, made me want to love, made me want to fucking go through heartbreak, like wanted to do all of it. And you have literally given me a doorway to just be myself. Kleenex. Mrs. S's big thing is um, desire to protect, uh, desire to care for those who sometimes are, are find it more difficult to be minded or to mind themselves. I think that's her big uh, thing. I think a, f a few of my, the clones, it's a, lack, it's a lacking of love. It's like, a <clears throat> like with Helena, it was a recognition of, um, a, there was a lack that she was trying to fill with the, you know, her strength is specific. I don't even know what her strength really is, but in terms of her fight, it was a lack. It was like a lacking in her. And <clears throat> I feel like that with Kasima too, there was like a real need for something that wasn't filled. Um, and Sarah too, like it's a whole reason she pushes everybody away, pushes away the notion of family, and pushes away the notion of m motherhood. Because she's just like, I don't deserve this. I don't, I don't recognize this. You know, I'm not worthy of it. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think it's, but at the base, love for sure. Mm. Mm. And we've talked about it a lot today in a lot of these interviews. But this is a show about family, and about the family that you're born into, but also more importantly, the family that you choose. And you know, just like all of us up here on stage, I mean, we get so much strength from Tat, of course who is like the most giving scene partner you'll ever meet. Yeah. And then we get strength from each other. Yeah. And, and so the, the themes that you see on screen and in these stories are also matched outside of the camera. It, you know, in events like this where we all get to be together. And like this moment right now is, is like potentially the last time we're all together. Oh, no. Like, I don't know, unless we have a reunion in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, But it's like, you know, we have people who live in Ireland, we have people who live in Canada, in Los Angeles, and in, in, in everywhere, all over the world now. And it's like, we're not going to have this anymore. We'll have a reunion. <laughs> God, we're dropping like flies up here. <laughs> Anybody have a tissue? I think one yeah, of the things about the, um, split here those two. Here we go. One of the other things about the show as well that gives us all strength and gives strength to the show is a desire by Graham and John to address some, that they have a notion of um, a, addressing uh, mm -hmm. injustice or disparity or giving a voice to rep or representation to those who are not represented or voiced so much. So that in itself is a, is a strengthening impulse and a, mm -hmm. just a kind of honorable notion. Yeah. I think too, like what's, you know, even though we're all gonna go our separate way, oh, we're not going to go our separate ways, but you know, we're going to go on to other, we'll move on to other projects and um, things will change. We've been asked so many times about the legacy of this show, and I guess it's just, I've been thinking a lot about it lately, this idea of, of imploring everybody who is a fan to this show to really 
uh, carry the carry the message with you long after the show is off of the air, long after this season is done, that women are complex and of value, that being any kind of deviation or minority is, is not, you're not the sum total of that, that human beings are complex and valuable and interesting, and that we can, we can love each other the way that these characters loved each other. It is possible. Mm. So I guess I just, I don't know, I guess I've just been thinking a lot about the legacy of the show that way. Mm. And if it's possible that, you know, other people have been moved by this fiction, these characters, then we can continue to move ourselves that way. We have, uh, we have time for one more question, and I'm going to go way, way, way in the back. Yes, yes. I get to do that, and I get to be this character that I feel like is very resonant with me, even though I've never met this person. And like Helena, I'll miss because yeah. <laughs> to me, like unlike any male or female or whatever character that I've ever read, like she exists as she's a total imagination. You know what when I mean? When are you she's ever going to go to work and just kind of grunt? Yeah, <laughs> and just like pick my nose, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, I'll miss writing Helena for sure. I'll miss writing your two guys as like one-liners and <laughs> like yeah, a lot. I, I know I, I everybody keeps saying that I'm a weirdo for saying this, but I keep thinking that I'm gonna <laughs> run into the characters on the street. Oh, yeah. I had I keep thinking I'm gonna run into Felix. Like I'm very aware <laughs> I am Felix. I just <laughs> I don't know. I just keep thinking I'm gonna like walk. I'm gonna like be at Smorgasbord or like Grand Central Market, and he's gonna be there like ordering Chinese food. Or something. <laughs> I, I miss him. I, I'm 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 gonna miss uh, I'm gonna miss Clone Club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm gonna miss. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, one of the one of the most exciting things because you know by the time the show's there, uh, you know, I've been in the minutia personally of post production, and know these episodes like. I've seen them way too many times, so that I don't, I'm not that excited about watching them on the air. I'm excited about watching the social media uh, and watching how people are responding to them as they're airing, and that's so cool. Like, it's so rewarding, and it's so amazing. And we have the best fans. Yeah, yeah. 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 fan art. Yeah, yeah. And the fan yeah. art. Yeah. 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 Music. And yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time. No! Yes, we are. We're gonna, we, we uh, are going to be interviewing, I'm going to be interviewing Asia Kate <laughs> Dillon from Billions next. Ooh. What an incredible performance that is. I hope you'll join us for that. And I want to ask for one more round of applause for a BBC America and Orphan Black. We would love to do that. How, how should we set this up? It's the best way. <laughs> It'll get released. You guys will get a high definition version. Don't worry. Okay. Sure. You want us on the on the floor? I think they're. Yeah. Or should we kneel down? You might want to even go. What if we stand down? Can we kneel down? Yeah. Your butt's gonna hang out. Let's lean, let's Here, I'll go in front do. of you let's so that your down. butt's not hanging yeah, out for everybody. Yeah. 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 Is that gonna work? Yeah. I'm gonna fall yeah. off the stage. Get on in here. Smell us. Okay, ready? <laughs> let's do a one yeah. Yeah. Clone club. One, two, three. Clone club! Yay! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you for that.